I want to tell you a story about March 16, 2013. I was home for spring break during my second year of medical school when life threw its greatest curveball. As suddenly, my family and I found ourselves in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Cincinnati Children's Medical Center, where my sister, Neha, was fighting on the verge of life and death. Her brain swelling before our eyes due to a spontaneous bleed requiring immersion neurological surgery. Fast forward to day three of hospitalization. And this is my medical board review book. And this is page 688, describing lung physiology and normal resting breathing, what we call tidal volume breathing. And I will never forget this moment. I look up, and there I see my sister on the ventilator, generating her own spontaneous breaths, putting theory immediately into practice. This was one of the most humbling moments of my career as a pediatric intensivist, and it began a lifelong journey for me to understand the science of peak performance in clinical medicine. In short, what made a clinician not only good, but great? The science of peak performance in clinical medicine has been also well established in other fields, such as sports, games, and musical performance. However, the art of medicine has one unique challenge. It is not bound by rules. There is no playbook. There exists a significant variability in the tasks clinicians face each day, which makes a standardized menu of how can I become a master clinician very challenging. However, in my research of the science of expert performance in clinical medicine and through my family's journey with Neha, I have centered myself around three key qualities which expert clinicians hone in on. The first, a commitment to cognitive depth and breath. Second, they find joy in work and practice ego sublimation. And third, they teach to learn. Now, if you ask a handful of clinicians when did you start feeling most comfortable of the diagnoses which you see? Many of them would anecdotally say, five years out of clinical training. Now, while I would argue that experience is invaluable, expertise is a function of going deep into a patient's diagnoses and the cognitive gymnastics of slowing the thinking process down, making sure you can learn the most from the patients whom you see. Think about this like squeezing the juice out of a lemon. Now, while it may not be possible to do this for every patient a clinician encounters, expert clinicians take a deliberate moment of reflection. They pause engage their team, and ask, are we overlooking something? What else could this be? This depth of thought, coupled with an insatiable curiosity, what I like to call cognitive reps, is a hallmark of top-tier clinicians. As these experts hone in on their skills, they become less fixated on the outcome and more invested in the journey of the process itself. The second characteristic of expert clinicians is the ability to sublimate 
their ego. And in uncomfortable scenarios, they become more comfortable saying three important words. I'm not sure. The principle of ego sublimation paradoxically makes the team trust the expert clinician even more. As the phrase, I'm not sure, is usually followed by, well, let's call the counsel, or let's look this up in the literature. A master clinician has the ability to accept uncertainty and put his or her ego to the side and find joy in the process of working together to hone in on a diagnosis. Now, it is at this point, I want to challenge you. Read this sentence. Now, read this sentence again, but with the lens of wanting to teach it to a five-year-old child. This is exactly how an expert clinician consumes content, through the lens of an educator. They also recognize that education is not about forcing information into a student's head, but rather extracting information out of a learner's mind through the power of inquiry. As a developing physician, I often reflect that our greatest teachers are not just in the textbooks, but in the narratives etched in human resilience, hope, and courage. When my sister lay there at the intersection between life and death, it was more than just a hard dream ordeal for my family and I. It was a transformative lesson in the complex dance between medicine and the mysteries of life. Every patient, every neha offers a new perspective, a new challenge, a new opportunity to dive deep into the depths of medical knowledge. They force us to question, to investigate, to learn. And most importantly, they compel us to grow. It is connection which propels the expert clinician forward. A dialogue that fosters deliberate practice and a continuous learning attitude. Because at the end of the day, we must remember that to be expert is also to be human. And we must always remain humble students, ready to learn from our patients and each other. Thank you.